Hey guys, how are you doing? This is the sixth video of the e-commerce with Golang project backend series. In this video, we'll write our signup function in the controllers file, okay? But before that, um, there's one thing that I want to take your attention to, which is basically the client that we created in the last video for our database setup.go file. The client that we created, it's the same actual client that was being used in our main.go file. When we created our main.go file, uh, we had this database.client, right? And it's exactly the same client, which is your package database and you have your client with the capital C. <clears throat> and that's how you're able to basically create your app. So I hope that makes sense. Now I think it's a full circle and it'll make much sense to you. Um, now uh, I realized that in the last video in the database setup.go when we were making this file, we didn't complete these two functions uh, at the end. So uh, let me first complete these two functions and then we'll head over to our sign up function. So here, uh, right, here what we have to do is, in this user data uh, function, I'll define a variable called collection. Because this function re uh, returns a collection, so I'll define a variable called collection, which is of type mongo.collection. Now, both spellings are wrong. Mongo spelling is wrong and collection spelling is wrong. So just fix that and you use client, which you're going to receive here, which is going to be the longer client, which you'll receive here, client.database. So what's going to be the database name? The database name uh, will be e-commerce dot collection, and collection uh, will be the collection name that's been passed here. So which in the bracket is collection name. And all you're doing from this function is return the collection. Similarly, for product data, uh, it's exactly the same thing. We'll say back product collection so that there's some, at least some difference between this collection and this collection that's going out. This one we'll call as product collection. I'll make the C smaller actually. And we'll say mongo.collection is equal to client.database. Database is e-commerce. dot collection and collection name make sense all returning is product collection okay actually you know what let me make this capital because I am from uh, I'm also a JavaScript developer and I just like camel case <laughs> so sorry so I'll just make uh, the C capital anyhow <clears throat> So uh, firstly, I just wanted to be consistent with collection, but now I just, you know, uh, I can't just get rid of camel case from my head. So anyhow, so uh, these two functions are done. Awesome. Now we'll head over to our controllers.go file and we'll work on our sign up function, which usually is an important function, right? In any file, any project. So um, what this returns is a gen handler punk. That means, it's basically turning a function and this function takes context which is of type gen dot context so this whole thing the whole function is what's going to be returned from the signup function make sense okay now the first thing that you start with you want to set the context so you'll say uh, you'll define a variable called context and cancel variable always context package is what you take you'll define with timeout context dot background uh, define a timeout basically for this function that will happen with the database and defer cancel. Okay, so now with that, when that's out of the way, we'll also define a user which is of type models. Use. So let me just show you what this means. You have your models file, you have your models file which is part of the models package, and using the models package is how you can uh, call the uh, structs defined here. So user is the first struct, right? That's defined in the model.co file. And it's defined like this with a capital U, right? That's that's why we created structs with capital letters so that they're easily recognizable here. Because you define a variable called user, whereas models.user is a struct and that's very easily identifiable because here the U is capital. Now user is a variable of type uh, user, which is a struct. So that means it's going to have all of these fields. I hope that makes sense now. 
<coughs> and I'm going to say c dot bind json user capture the error and handle the error error is not equal to nil c dot json http dot status bad request comma gen dot h error error dot errors and you return from this okay now uh, you want to validate the struct so now you've created this uh, variable you have this variable user right so everything that you received um, you want to basically um, capture in this variable called user you know, all the values and now you want to validate the struct of the user so you'll say uh, and you'll capture a validation error validate.struct and you'll handle the validation error now. so you'll say if validation error is not equal to nil c.json HTTP dot status bad request validation error and you want to return from this function now uh, comes the most important part right so now we're just writing the uh, boilerplate stuff but now comes the most important part where we'll check whether that user uh, with that email already exists in our database or not because then we won't let him sign up right so what you'll say is you'll say user collection dot count documents plus context json dot m we'll pass the email which is user dot email you'll get the count from here okay and you'll handle the error and obviously if count we'll also check for the count if as in count is uh, you know greater than zero then that means that's a problem because somebody with that email address is already there in our database that means we can't allow this user to sign up makes sense so here we have error not equal to nil uh, and in this case you want to say log dot panic error c dot json http dot status internal server error on origin dot h error error okay return from this place now comes the important part that i was talking about where the count that he just received here you want to check if it's greater than zero if it is then you, you have to say that the user already exists so you can see json http dot uh, status bad request comma chin dot page header user already exists amazing now you also want to do the same thing for his phone number so um, i'm almost using the same logic that we used in that j2p authentication tutorial and the restaurant one also almost the same code so we had a check for email and a check for phone number so i'm going to do the almost the same thing i'm doing here okay so that we have some consistency so you have user collection dot count documents and you have ctx comma json m and phone is user dot phone count comma error and you'll get your cancel and you check for the error this error is what you're checking for so if error <coughs> not equal to nil you are Take it to the next line actually. Log dot panic error C dot JSON HTTP dot status internal server error. And you get the error and just return. 
right? So I'm aware that my image is there somewhere here on the right side and uh, it sometimes covers the code. But let me just uh, scroll up and down so that you, uh, I hope you've caught uh, and you were able to see what, what I was typing, right? Um, I'll, I'll anyways leave this code on GitHub, right? After the project series is complete. So if in case you missed something, don't worry, you'll have something to compare with. But I'm just keeping this on the screen right now, this code, so that you can uh, just verify. You can always pause the video, you can slow it down, you can you know take screenshots just to make sure everything, you got everything correctly. So here, um, again, you want to check if count is greater than zero. The same thing, we'll say c.json, http.status, bad request, and the error is phone is already in use. This phone number is already in use. Okay, and you want to return from here. Awesome. And now all we have to do is set up all the right data points from the user uh, struct, right? All of these we have to set in that user object. And this is something that I want to continue in the next video. Uh, we've already gone way above, not way above, but at least a little bit above 10 minutes. So I want to pause this video here. And in the next video, we will take care of the part that's pending for sign up, which is as in the complete logic is complete. Only need to recreate that user function, that uh, user object that you'll return basically. And uh, then we'll work on our login uh, function in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. Do subscribe to the channel so that you don't know when, uh, whenever such awesome content comes out. And I have more than 100 videos on Golang on my channel. Do check them out and keep learning. And I'll see you. Thanks.